Hello everybody, what's going on? This is Andrew, and today I'm back with another deck building video. Um, the last time I did this was when Adventures in the Forgotten Realm was being spoiled, and I tried to build some mono blue tempo kind of decks. Uh, and now I'm back, and I want to talk about another deck, or another card in particular, that makes me want to build a certain kind of deck. Uh, that card was spoiled during today. I'm recording this on the first day of spoilers for Innistrad Midnight Hunt. So it's Thursday, September 2nd. Um, but Sigarda, Champion of Light, was just spoiled. And real quick, what Sigarda does, Sigarda is a 4-mana 4-4. Four, four. That's 1, a green, and 2 white. Flying Trample. Humans you control get plus 1, plus 1. And then this Sigarda has... Well, before we get into the other ability... That on its own is a pretty powerful top end if the support exists for humans underneath. 4 mana 4-4 four, four Flying Trample is totally acceptable in standard a lot of the time. Giving all of your other creatures plus 1 plus 1 also very strong, and in the right aggressive deck, this could just be lights out one of the best cards you could be casting on turn 4. But Sigarda has another ability. There's a new ability called Coven, and Coven cares about if you have three or more creatures with different powers. Now, they haven't released the rules text yet, and but all I'm, I'm guessing that all it's caring about is as long as you have three creatures with a different number in the power spot down here, so like a one, a two, and a four, or a two, a three, and a four, then the ability triggers. And Sigarda's ability says that whenever Sigarda attacks, if you meet the Coven restriction, which is you control three or more creatures with different powers, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a human from among them, put it into your hand, and then put the rest in the bottom in any order. Or in a random order, sorry. So, Sigarda comes down, gives your creatures a huge buff. Your opponent has to kill Sigarda that turn, otherwise you get to attack with her to keep drawing humans to keep the ball rolling. Again, this is a really powerful effect for a white aggressive deck. White aggressive, white aggressive decks tend to just dump their hand and then kind of have no way to draw cards or get card advantage later on. Sometimes they'll use creature lands like Faceless Haven to fill the kind of card advantage void. Um, sometimes they just cross their fingers and hope <laughs> hope that what they've got is good enough. But Sigarda gives you a way to refuel as the game draws on. So, standards rotating when Innistrad Midnight Hunt comes out. A bunch of stuff is changing. So while we can look at, at a version of a mono-white deck that exists today to see what how we can rebuild it, and I've got that right here. Uh, this is a white weenie deck that I played back over the summer. Um, I... You know, it has Professor of Symbology, I'll see a device bounty, giant killer, selfless savior, um, and it was just like a white aggro deck with some glass caskets, some sparring regimens, and some faceless havens. This deck was cool, and there's a lot of different variants on decks like this. Some of them play Ball of the Skyclaves, some of them play the White God, I'm blanking on its name right now, but they were all kind of sort of like this. The issue is we're losing a bunch of these cards, right? All Seed of Life's Bounty is in Theros Beyond Death. This card's not going to be in Standard anymore. Neither is Giant Killer. Neither is Selfless Savior. Um, we still do get Luminarch Aspirant, Professor of Symbology, Elite Spellbinder, Redain, Skyclave Apparition, and Legion Angel if we want it. So some of the top end of the deck is the same. We're losing some of the sideboard cards, but I'm not going to worry too much about the sideboard stuff right now. But it's not going to be just a plug-and-play. You can't just replace cards from this deck with cards in the new set and, and hope it works. So instead, you kind of need to start from the ground up. One of the other restrictions, obviously, is Sigarda cares about humans. So if we come back over to this deck list, you know, we've got Skyclave Apparition, which is a core spirit. We've got Redain, which is a god. We've got Professor of Symbology, a core cleric. And Professor of Symbology usually grabs a card like Inkling Summoning, which makes an Inkling. You get my point, right? Like, we're going to have to completely rebuild this deck. So where did I start? 
well, Sigarda wants humans, and I want to build around Sigarda. And uh, before I get into the deck, I want to tell a, a, a quick story. So Sigarda has become a bit of a, a meme, a joke to, to my friends and those, those who know the joke. Um, I played in GP Vancouver December of 2018 or January 2019, I think. Um, the double, no, not double masters, um, ultimate masters, uh, sealed. And my sealed deck was this really weird Bant deck um, that had a Sigarda in it. I had a dig through time and I had a lot of ways to go through my deck to find Sigarda, but it wasn't this Sigarda. I'll put what Sigarda it was on screen. So here, here's the card. Sigarda, Host of Herons, 5 mana, 5-5, five, five, flying, hexproof, spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to sacrifice permanence. <laughs> um, this card's insane. Very good and limited, especially when you have cards like Dig Through Time to go find your Sigarda in your limited deck. Um, I went 8-1 and one on in my sealed deck, and then I almost top eight the event. So just play Sigarda has become a bit of a joke to my friends because this card's insane, and I cast it in almost every game. Um, almost every game of day one, and it, it, it was amazing for me. And then I started sneaking it into my modern decks as a one-of sideboard card for, for different matchups. Um, so that's my quick aside on Sigarda Host of Herons, and that's why I'm particularly excited for Sigarda Champion of Light, and why I feel like I need <laughs> I need to try to build this deck. So, where do we start? What creatures do we already have in standard that have already proven themselves that could be a good, a good starting spot? Well... It, at the one drop spot, we've got Usher of the Fallen. It is not a human, it's a spirit, but it creates 1-1 one, one human warrior creature tokens. So, 1 mana 2-1 is what you want in a white weenie deck, and then if you don't have a 2 drop, this can make humans that will later pick up buffs. Um, I think this is probably the best one drop we have currently. Maybe there will be something in, in a Stroud Midnight Hunt that will partner or pair pretty well with this, but for now this is the best we've got. At the two, dro two drop slot, Luminar Aspirant is the obvious choice. This powers up itself and your team and gets out of hand pretty quickly. At the three drop slot, we've got PVDDR himself, Elite Spellbinder. This card's insane. I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. If anything, the smaller card pool in New Standard will make this card a little bit better. Um, I think this card is a four of in any white aggressive deck that needs to be built. Um, and that's kind of it. Those three cards. Uh, sorry, I, I spoiled <laughs> what I'm going to talk about next. Uh, Selfless Glyph Weaver was a card that, when it came out, I think people were kind of excited about its prospects in a white aggressive deck. You can exile it to give all your creatures indestructible till, to, until end of turn. Selfless Spirit the 2 mana 2 and flying version of this that was in probably the last Innistrad set, I think, um, was really good, and it showed up in a lot of white aggressive decks. So obviously this one must be good, right? Well, not really, because we had Selfless Savior, the dog, and Alcea of Life's Bounty. With those rotating out of standard, we might need to rely on Selfless Glyph Weaver to fill that same spot. Still, this card's good. It's a 3 mana 2 3, which is fine stat wise, and it protects all your other stuff. So, this helps us go wide if that's where we need to take the deck. And that's kind of it. That, those are the humans in standard that I think could easily go into the deck that have already proven themselves to be powerful. But I've got a big list of cards that might make it. Okay, so I'm going to go over those kind of in sets. So, first, we've just got humans with stats. Star Pupil, 1 mana 1 1 with, with a plus 1 plus 1 counter. When it dies, you get to move the counter someplace else. Is this card good? No. Is it okay? Yeah. And it does kind of work well with Luminar Luminarch Aspirant, right? You can put more counters on this, then when this dies, you get to move the counters to somebody else. You don't lose those counters. Interesting. I don't know if it's good enough or not, but it could be. You can see the potential. And then we've got Arc Priest of Iona. So this is a party card from Zendikar Rising. And it's obviously got potential, right? It could be a 1-mana 3-2, a 1-mana 4-2 even. 
but you need a lot to go right for this to work. Well, if we look back at the cards I've already talked about, we've got a spirit warrior, a human cleric, another human cleric, and yet another human cleric. So lots of human clerics, but this one's a human wizard, and this is a cleric. So if the cards that we want to put in this deck just happen to give us a decent representation of cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard, I think Arc Priest could be pretty good. Is it good if you're not consistently hitting this bottom part? I don't know, but it's worth keeping in the back of our minds as we move forward. Sigrid is a legendary human that can exile creatures um, that are attacking or blocking. It's a powerful effect, but I don't know if Sigrid's going to be good enough, but it's a good card to keep in mind. And then, I, I should have switched the order on these two, Tazri, Beacon of Unity, has been showing up in standard 22, 2022 lists already. Um, and if we're playing Archpriest of Iona, then I think we should probably want to be playing Tazri. Tazri's a relatively cheap, good statted beater if we're um, if we have enough party cards to make it work, and then can help you recharge also. Tazri is something to keep in mind. Again, if the cards line up, I don't want to be forcing anything, but if they line up, I think Tazri could be good. We've also got Maya, Breguard Protector. Maya gives all your creatures plus one, plus one. So now we've got up to seven, eight effects, or cards with this effect on it, between this and, and Sagarda. So... Maybe Maya's good as just duplicates of that ability, and Maya's a human that makes human warriors. Maya's a really good card to find with Sagarda's ability, and keeps pumping out dorks as you make land drops. But Maya's not really great on its own. It's a pretty bad top deck if you have nothing else going on, but it's really good if the game's about making more creatures. So it's hard to say if Maya's going to be good in a deck like this or not, I'm leaning towards no, but it's good to remember that this card is out there. Now, I totally forgot that we had this card. Two mana to make two 1-1 one, one white human creature tokens. This, like, cards like this will see play in human decks if human decks are good. And it has flashback later on too. Um, again, I don't know if we want to go more a tokens route or more like a traditional white weenie route, but we need to remember that cards like Join the Dance exist. One of the best humans in the format right now is Werewolf Pack Leader, this two mana three three that helps you draw cards and is a human. Now the double green is the only thing that I'm worried about uh, with putting Werewolf Pack Leader in our deck, going from double green to double white on Sagarda with the mana that we have available in the format, might be a little rough, but I think I think there might be a world where we where we can do this. Um, we've also got Rally the Ranks. We can just throw this down on a human and make our humans buff. So I feel like there's like a Maya, Rally the Ranks, um, Join the Dance build of the deck. And I don't know if it's any good, but it puts a lot of tokens onto the battlefield potentially, and then overwhelms your opponent in little chunks instead of big chunks. Um, now, we did, today, get another card spoiled from the new set that I think is an auto-include in the deck, and that's Brutal Cathar. Uh, Brutal Cathar is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two. when it enters the battlefield or transforms into Brutal Cathar. You exile a creature and opponent controls until this leaves the battlefield. And it flips into Moonrage Brute, a 3-3 three, three with First Strike that has Ward pay 3 life. Now, Ward, uh, just as a reminder, is the ability that they're trying to replace Hexproof with. So Ward says, if you want to target this, you need to pay the Ward cost in addition to um, the regular cost of the spell. So if somebody wanted to, you know, Doomblade this, they'd need to pay 2 and 3 life to kill it when it's in moot when it's moon rage brute that's pretty good getting the three damage in when you're an aggressive deck it's not always going to be a cost that the opponent can easily pay so definitely want to keep our eye out on this card i think this card is just an auto an auto include in the deck so all that being said 
what, where do we start and what do we keep our eyes out for? Well, this is what I'd start with. I would just start with Usher of the Fallen, Luminar Gasperant, Brutal Cathar, Elite Spellbinder, Selfless Glyph Weaver, and Sigarda. That's only 22 cards. We've got a lot of room left in this deck, and you can fill it in with any of the options I just went over, and I think we'll probably get some humans, or I know we'll get more humans as the spoilers for Innistrad Midnight Hunt can continue to come out. But I'm really excited to try different versions of this deck and see if we can make Sigarda Champion of Light shine um, because this is a really powerful card. I think it's a really cool, really cool top end for, for decks like this. So that's going to be it for me for now. Um, I will update with a video once, uh, once we get these cards on Magic Arena. I hope you've enjoyed kind of walking through the deck building and card evaluation process with me. It's always nice to, to sit down and try to build decks and figure out what might go into, what might go into these decks. Um, so I enjoyed this. I hope you did too. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you next time.